oh boy, here they come, here they come. Oh, 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 oh. Scout is a little restless tonight, too. Yeah, he's very nervous. I told him not to worry. <laughs> worry about what? Well, you know, Scout is a champion now. You do know he's a show dog, don't you? Yes, but when you bought him last year, you showed me his genealogy chart. Direct line to ten-time champion Scout Hobbingdale of Willingham. Last week, Scout earned best of breed at the Winchester Dog Show. And next month, he's entered in the Greater Boston event. So he's a little worried about defending his title. Right, sweetie? I better get him back home. He needs his beauty sleep. Chest out, tail back, show your feathers. Don't worry, Guinness. You could be best of breed. Whatever breed, that is. No. I meant that as a compliment. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, see? And you didn't believe me. Arthur, that's a bear! You, you say that like it's my fault. Oh, no! Don't worry, ma'am. It's just a tranquilizer dart. Oh, no, no! Honestly, sir, the bear won't be harmed. I understand. But he's got a carton of my favorite chocolate chip ice cream in his big greedy paws, and he's eating it! Oh, no! No, dear, it's just a tranquilizer dart. No, Arthur, look! Our car is gone! Mom? Dad? What's going on? Everything is all right. I'll tell you about it in the morning. Mommy, I looked out the window and I thought I saw a bear. Don't worry, Catherine. The bear is fine. We have a bear? Okay, Dr. Bindleby. I think I have everything I need. Make, model, color, year. But I must warn you, if this was a professional job, your car could be in 50 pieces by now. They make more money selling the parts. Well, you see, I bought a whole car. And if possible, officer, I would like a whole car pack. We'll do the best we can, sir. Thank you. Oh, officer, keep your eye out for the glove compartment. I've got a stash of chocolate in there. The kids go back to sleep. The minute they hit the pillow, I don't think they were really even awake. What about Angie? Angie, I wonder why all that noise didn't wake up Angie. <gasps> I peeked into her room before I went to bed. I thought she was under the blanket. The old jailbreak trick. And you fell for That's it. That's beside the point, Arthur. We have a missing teenage daughter. Call the police. Arthur, huh. what if Angie took the car? That's right. I gave her a set of keys when she got her learner's permit. Our daughter's a fugitive. I hope that's all there is to it. Call the police. Right. Call the police. Hi. <gasps> she claims to be your daughter. Never saw her before in my life. Dad! So is this your daughter or not, sir? Can I plead the fifth? Dad, please! Yes, officer, this is my daughter. Now, you do know, sir, that in the state of Massachusetts, a permit holder who is under the age of 18 may not operate a motor vehicle between the hours of 12 midnight and 5 a.m. unless accompanied by a parent or legal guardian. I'm aware of that. And, sir, are you aware that the holder of a learner's permit may only operate a motor vehicle when accompanied by a licensed operator who is 21 years of age or over? However, the boy with her... A boy? Yes, ma'am. And the boy was under 21. Who was driving? No one, sir. We found the car parked a block away, around the corner. 
And although your daughter was behind the wheel, she claimed she did not move the car. Of course, if she did move the car from the garage, we could charge her with, among other things, unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. How many years will she get? Mom! Arthur! No, officer. Oh, it won't be necessary. You see, sometimes my car does creep out of the garage by itself. I understand, sir. If I were you, I'd trade it in for a more stationary model. Oh, I wish I could. Angie, how could you do such a thing? Mom, I... You could have hurt someone. But I know how to drive. You could have hurt yourself. I'm sorry. Sorry is not good enough this time. You do understand that what you did is illegal. I only went a block. Illegal is illegal. Doesn't matter how many blocks. Angie, I want an explanation. Well, see, James... James, again! Look, Dad, I said I was sorry. And I said sorry wasn't good enough this time. All that happened was, see, James called me and he said he wanted to talk to me. We met out by the garage, but it was cold, so we got in the car. Then, I don't know, I thought I'd take the car around the block. Big deal. It is a big deal. Let me smell your breath. Dad. I said, let me smell your breath. <sighs> See? I knew it! Huh? She's been eating the chocolate I hid in the glove compartment. Okay, all right. I know what I did was bad, but... Okay, really bad. But what about the boy in the news who went to jail for robbing a store? That boy lives in Montana. What does that have to do with you? That's an example of where I could have gone. You are grounded until you're 37. And give me your cell phone. Uh, what? I said, give me your cell phone. Can you hear me now? Dad, I only did it because of peer pressure. Don't you understand peer pressure? Peer pressure? I will tell you about peer pressure. Parent peer pressure. <laughs> now, where was I? Yes, I was saying that while children may claim rights of passage as an excuse for bad behavior, parents have rights of passage too, and one of them is to have children who do well. For example, three students were invited to go to Argentina for a week because they finished top in their advanced Spanish class. I'm not asking you to get into Yale, and I'm not asking you to get into Temple, but what I'm telling you is a good education is important. But more than that, it allows your parents to be able to go out. And when they go out, they want to be able to say something wonderful about their children. Does everyone understand? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes, but may I say something? Go ahead. Michelle, one of the girls who's going to Argentina? Yes. She sucks her soup. Thank you very much for that bit of information. Why don't we try that the next time we run into Michelle's parents? Well, you know, your daughter sucks her soup. <laughs> this kid James, where were his parents last night? They just let him run around anytime he wants. Looks that way. When I was a teenager, my father... Arthur, please. It's too early in the morning for one of those my father grounded me so hard I ended up living in the basement stories. Don't forget, we're going to that community charity huh? event at 8. <sighs> That's tonight? Yes, it is. I knew you'd forget. I didn't forget. Okay, but you didn't remember either. You know, Arthur, I was thinking about what you said at breakfast about parent peer pressure. I never thought of it in those terms, but you're right. I'm right? I'm right? You really said that? Let me mark this day down on my calendar. Seriously, a lot of parents stop by the bookstore and they stand there for 10 minutes talking about their kids. So-and-so did this, so-and-so did that. Exactly, and it even goes beyond kids. I told you about Harriet's champion dog scout, right? Yes, dear. Arthur, do you think Catherine is small for her age? Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, she is a little small. And what about Roy? He doesn't seem to have many friends. Do you think he's developing adequate social skills? And Angie, what will become of her if she doesn't study harder and gain more of a sense of responsibility? Okay, Al Capone, ready for school? Dad, maybe I shouldn't go to school today. I think I have a fever. Nice try. The old I'm sick routine because you don't want to go to school because you're worried what people will say about what happened last night. Well, you just have to face the music. According to local police, a bear invaded the garage of Arthur and Norma huh? Bindleby late last night. 
Dr. Arthur Bindlebeep, a teacher at Central High School, apparently spotted the bear while walking his dog. The bear was safely returned to the wild, but that's not the end of the story. It seems the bear called attention to the fact that the Bindlebeep car was missing from the garage. When the Bindlebeeps reported the car stolen, police swiftly located the car just a block away. And who was found inside the car? None other than the Bindlebeep's daughter, Angie. And those are the bare facts. Norma, if we walk fast, do I feel warm to you? Shark by 10. Morning, Arthur. Well, I must say, you had an exciting time last night. I saw the news item this morning. I could barely keep from laughing. <laughs> well, you know how it is with children, Heathcliff. Yes, Arthur, indeed I do. Sometimes, as parents, you just have to grin and bear it. <laughs> How much information is required to tell a story? Well, that depends on the news organization. Now, can anyone give me an example of a recent story that could have been enhanced by additional data? Oh! Yes, Mr. Kurtz. Dr. Bindleweep, there was a story on the local news this morning about Angie and a bear. <laughs> yes, Mr. Kurtz. But what kind of bear was it? I didn't get close enough to check his passport. Why was the bear in the highly populated area? Okay, Mr. Kurtz, let's move on. What about the human interest angle to the story? A young woman acts with a certain reckless abandon, a sense of adventure, a dazzling display of daring. Who is this woman? What was her motivation? Don't we want to know more about her? Don't I? You want to know more about her? Set up an interview through her parole officer. <laughs> hey, girl. Angie, did you really take your parents' car last night? I just drove around the corner. Cool. Not so cool. I'm grounded and I lost my phone privileges. <gasps> See, if James hadn't called me... James? James the octopus? Didn't he dish you at that concert when he showed up with Wanda? James and I had to talk about that. I can handle James. Oh, yeah? Then why don't you tell us what really happened last night? Hello, Dr. Bando Beep. Good afternoon, Carmel. Sky? We better get to class. Yeah, right. See ya. So, why don't you tell me what happened last night? Dad. I asked you a question. I told you before, James and I were talking. And? And nothing. Then the police came. And if they hadn't? Dad, please. Just checking. That's my job. And my job also entails getting you out of the house and into the real world in one piece. So you do understand that even though I fully expect you to make more mistakes, I also fully expect you never again to do something so idiotic and dangerous. Yes, Dad. Good. Now, let me get back to the ridicule I am facing as the father of Angie Bendelby. Can't I say I'm sorry even though you said it wasn't good enough this time? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I almost forgot. Give me the car keys. Dad, I said I was sorry. So am I. Now give me the car keys. Why is he so happy? He took my car keys. Oh, yeah, I can see why that would make him happy. Along with every other driver in the state. You know what I like about you, Angie? What? All the trouble you get into. You make mom and dad look really bad. But you make one little boy, which is moi, look really good. <laughs> Esther Clydehopper. Yes, she said, you know, my daughter Eileen was chosen to represent the high school in the National Marching Band Jamboree. Esther was so smug, and she didn't buy anything. I think she just stopped by the bookstore to gloat. Hey, I understand. Sometimes parent peer pressure can be almost unbearable. Ooh. <laughs> now I'm making bear jokes. You know what I don't understand? Everything? No, seriously. I was being serious. Why is it that all these charity auctions try to sell you stuff nobody would want? I mean, look at this. A ceramic frog? Who would want a ceramic frog? A ceramic princess? What are you doing? 
Just seeing if it would turn into a ceramic prince. Ah, but you already have a prince, my darling. Yes, I do. Hey, Bend and Beat. Yes, I'm Arthur Bendelbeep, and you are? Robert Pallone. I'm James's father, and I want to talk to you. Okay. Listen, I'm very upset with your daughter, Angie. You're upset with my daughter? Yes, I am. Last night, your daughter convinced my son, James, to take some kind of midnight thrill ride. Is that what you think happened? Yes. And I must tell you that James just cannot afford to get into any kind of trouble. He has a lot to lose. Is that so? Yes. As you know, James is the star quarterback, and every major college in the country is trying to recruit him. With James' enormous talent, he'll be a dominant force wherever he chooses to play in college and then be a high draft pick in the NFL where he will go on to become a superstar professional football player making millions of dollars. I would say that's a lot to lose. I agree. So you see my point. Angie jeopardized all of that for James last night. After all, Angie doesn't really have anything to lose. But James is a self-focused, pampered, underachieving young man, which, as a member of the faculty, I know very well. And if you had ever bothered to come to even one parent-teacher conference, you would know that too. And you would have learned from more than one of his teachers that your son, James, has problems. That his attitude of entitlement without some sort of parental intervention is surely going to lead him down a path of self-destruction. Now look. And furthermore, for your information, it was not Angie who lured James out last night. It was the other way around. Arthur, that was wonderful. <sighs> Thank you, dear. <clears throat> Doctor and Mrs. Bindlebeep, I'm Alice Cutler. My daughter, Jill... ...is a National Merit student, president of the Stamp Club. Well, yes, and I just wanted to tell you that Angie is an exceptional young lady. She is? Angie Bindlebeep, right? <laughs> we only moved here at the beginning of the school year. My daughter Jill isn't the most outgoing girl, but your daughter has kind of taken her under her wing. Jill says that Angie's one of the kindest people she's ever met. And as a parent of a girl who's sometimes dwarfed by others, I just thought Angie's parents would like to know how much of a help she's been. Thank you. Please, it's our pleasure. You must be very proud of her. Every day. Oh, Dr. Bindlebeep, there you are. Phyllis, how are you? Fine, thank you. Phyllis, my wife, Norma. Hello, Norma. Hello, Phyllis. You have heard, of course. Heard? Why, yes, about my daughter, Michelle. Because she was number one in Spanish, she was selected to take a trip to Argentina. That's very nice. But did you know your daughter sucks her soup? <gasps> Good. I was feeling too dry. Excuse me. Excuse me. You know what I think? What? I think we're fantastic parents. So do I. Compared to the other parents, we're unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't know why we were worried so much about parent peer pressure. Neither do I. I mean, if we weren't great parents, how else could we have raised such great kids? Catherine, you want some candy? No. Why not? You like candy. Don't push it. That leaves more for us. I can't have candy this close to bedtime. Oh, no, it's okay. Mom and Dad aren't here. Come on, Angie. I said don't push it. She doesn't want any candy. Leave her alone. I'm worried that Mom and Dad have too much parent peer pressure. I have to be good. Look, Catherine, you're six. You don't need to worry about things like that. You're wrong. She is not six. There is a grown person inside that teeny little body. <gasps> uh oh! Clean it up! Clean up! <gasps> don't put it on there. <gasps> Candy? This late? Oh, just a piece or two. <laughs> That's fine. It doesn't hurt mm. once in a while. It doesn't. Something wrong? No. Nothing wrong. How about a hug good night? 
Good night, my wonderful children. <laughs> okay, that was weird. Yeah, I know. I just don't get parents. Neither do I. I do. <laughs> Oh!